this again. Live, everybody. Live television. Okay. Three, two, one. Problems with punk. It's the Sunset Flip Wrestling Podcast coming to you live on Double C TV. Featuring Darren. Oh, God. Where to? And Double C. Wrestling gets you laid. Gotcha. As they take on five hours of WWE programming. I'm pretty sure he fudged it just while he was doing the hurricane run. Like, oh god, I don't know how to do this correctly. Alright. Episode 50. On a very special episode of Sunset Flip Podcast. Yeah. We dive into the issues of CM Punk. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, so, it's time to celebrate, because 50 episodes of doing Woo! this, uh, 70... You think, get, you think we'd get tired after a while? Yeah, 75 total. So, this is... Just think, of all the hours of footage that we've done, and all that stuff, I mean, like, other people with larger audiences have quit. (laughs) Yeah, and we're still streaming on. Why? Because we love bitching to you people. Yeah. I don't really... I don't know sometimes. Anyways. Uh, So, today we have SmackDown and Raw. SmackDown from the 21st and Raw from last night, which was the 24th. Fourth, yeah. My yeah. God, how time flies. Yep. Okay. So, so let's start off with SmackDown. The show starts off with a Mr. Daniel Bryan. And Naturally. He's all he's all pissed off about what happened on Monday. Now, see, on Monday night last week, uh, he was injured mid match. He technically had a stinger, which is a which is a uh, injury that you don't really know how bad it is, but it turned out to be nothing. It turned out just a little bruise. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So. Which I guess it's better to err on the caution of safety, quitting the match, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. So. He's mad about the match being stopped. There's a video on WWE.com with Triple H saying, safety, safety, safety. And he goes, he wants to face Randy Orton again. Because he's mad. He's mad. Yes. Here is Daniel Bryan, and he's really mad. Here is Daniel Bryan, and he's really angry. Yeah, pretty much. I'm a, everybody is angry. They betray all me. I'm fed up with this world. That sort of thing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, and then Randy Orton comes out and he goes, I respect you. And then Daniel Bryan goes, you don't respect me. And then Randy Orton says, yes, I do. And then Daniel Bryan goes, no. And then Randy Orton goes, fine. I'll go ahead and go ahead and beat the respect out of you. Fine, I'll wrestle, whatever. It's like, it's not like we're, this is a wrestling show or something. Yeah. Okay. So, we have that to look forward to, but first we have a Sheamus match versus Cody Rhodes. Why are we keep on... Why? Because whatever. we need something for Sheamus to do. I guess. I mean, they did That's have... That's the honest reason. <sighs> Yeah, I know. So, anyways, uh, so Cody, but Cody taps to the clover leaf. Mm-hmm. Yep, and then Sandow attacks because he was ringside, and That's Sandow right. looks strong on this. To make him look strong, More. he beats up Sheamus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Rinse and repeat. Pretty much. Next up, we have an uh, intercontinental title match with Wade Barrett yeah. and Curtis Axel. <laughs> and this wa- this match was actually pretty good. Uh, Axel goes over Wade Barrett. Mm-hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, with his one-handed neck breaker, I'm calling it now. A one-handed neck breaker, sweet. Yeah. Next up, we have AJ versus Natalia. And Natalia breaks out the inverted surfboard. Nice. I don't know how you do it, it just looks cool. At least she's doing something interesting. Mm -hmm. However, AJ wins via submission using her, uh, her ass tapping one. Ass tapping Black Widow thing. Yeah. I call it the ass tapper. Yeah. Because every, <laughs> Mainly because everyone taps AJ pretty much. Pretty much the only way you can win is to tap AJ's ass. Uh, Caitlin, who apparently was backstage or something, decided that. Oh yeah, she was backstage watching the match. Oksana gets up in her face and uh, she goes ballistic. Caitlyn does. So is it, this just petty to you? I mean, even if they tried with the drama for the divas, I can't be satisfied either way. It's either no drama or it just seems so petty. It's it's like that age old argument: all women hate each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A little to be fair, there's nothing... Uh, there To be fair, there's nothing amazing going on the men's side, so why am I... I guess it's just that it seems... Even if you, like, take out all the stuff with, like, the championship, it's like... Just doesn't... It just feels very high school -y, if you get my drift. Yeah. And that's my major problem with a lot of, like, wrestling is that a lot of it feels like high school mm -hmm. and I know that's like a part of the soapbox drama era, era they're supposed to go with but you got there's got to be at least better you got to work better because I know soapbox dramas are like soap operas are like those things are just uh, just uh, supposed to be bad television altogether I've seen a few of them. They're not horrible, but really it comes down to the same things of cheating wives, people not people you don't care about, or that sort of thing. And really, you gotta strive for a little bit better, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, we got a good match coming up. It's Chris Jericho versus Alberto Del Rio, part one. Yay! Uh, and in this match, we see the Lion Tamer Cole actually calls it the Lion Tamer this time. Nice. But because uh, Ricardo decided to get involved with the match, he gets a Lion Tamer. And and then Dolph Ziggler attacks out of nowhere. Surprise Ziggler. Surprise Ziggler. Yeah. And then like, Jericho's all pissed because Ziggler technically like got him de an, DQ'd. Is an idiot. And decides to code break Ziggler. Yeah. Yeah, Dolph Ziggler is a bit of an idiot, can't you tell? Yeah, he's he's hot headed right now. Very hot headed. Hmm. Uh, what I mean is that he does stuff without thinking about. It. Like any lo logical, rational person would think, you know, I want to screw over this guy so horribly. That he's not able to... That he gets revenge for him. So what does he do? He interrupts in the middle of like a match or something. When he could just... Stand on the edge. Play his music. Do nothing. And while he's distracted... While the other guy is distracted... The guy, the other guy gets the pin. Yeah. Eh. It's a simple idea. You don't have to actually freaking get involved... And disqualify the guy. But then again, this is going into more ideals like but then again yeah that's like uh saying that's me thinking smart and you know he's being heel and he doesn't do that sort of thing yeah technically tweening right now tweening whatever i don't i don't see it honestly it's just whatever yeah a lot of there's actually a lot of tweeners right now come to think about it okay so next up we have another match now match number five Drew McIntyre versus Christian. 
Okay. Yay, hey, it's so. good to see Christian again. Yeah. So Christian, he beats McIntyre, which is meh, whatever. You know, you know what's gonna happen. He gets on the mic. And he goes, We all know what we wanna see. It's that one more match. And I face palm. Cause I hated Wait, what? I hated that. His gimmick was one more match. I want one more match. For the world title, basically. It's like, congratulations, I want my rematch, sort of thing. You know, from Batista. He used to do that all the uh, time. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Like... But, hey, remembering days, I wish I didn't. Yeah, and then the shield come out. And they come from the entrance ramp this time. Oh, well, that's a switch up. I know. And then they triple power bomb. Uh, Christian, because they can't. Because, well, they're the shield, and that's what they do for some reason. Yeah. And Literally just wasting my time. Yeah. Next up, we have Paul Heyman backstage interview with the uh, new announcer one. By the way, did you know that Matt Stryker got released? Really? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. Maybe you'll go to ESPN with... Uh, Josh Matthews. Uh, you tell funny jokes. I know. It's like I'm I'm sitting at the bar on a on a Friday night, and then Josh Matthews is on the TV screen. It's like, oh, I know that guy, and he's announcing boxing. That's about all much he can do yeah. right now. He still has the stupid glasses and the stupid haircut. Anyways, does he have anything else stupid? No. He just talks about boxing. Anyways. So, Paul Heyman goes, I won't talk about the Lesnar attack because it's personal. And that's it. And then on Monday, he talks about it in front of everybody. And it gets real personal. Uh, Now we have our main event. Randy Orton versus Daniel Bryan. Yay! Yay! Well, actually, if it was anything like bras, it should be fun. Uh, yeah. It was, but it was more at half speed because there wasn't any gimmicks involved. Really, but it was still a pretty good match. Uh, Daniel Bryan wins by count out technically... Well, not technically, but I say he ca- went, uh, ah! I say he won twice. Mm-hmm. Because they're, they're both on the outside of the ring. Orton is down for the count. And the ref is up at 8. Daniel Bryan gets back up into the ring. Orton's still not moving. And he decides to launch himself at Orton one more time anyway. And then gets the countout victory. And it's like... You don't have to do this! You already won once. And then... And then he gets on the mic and says, No, we're not gonna do it like this! Restart the match, damn it! And then fade to black. Well, yeah. that was fun. Yeah. So you're telling me this was just a giant setup for neck for raw. Right. My God. However. That's shameless. However, I think it paid off. It pays off, but God damn it, is that still shameless? Yeah. But of course, before we get to raw. We have an indie spot. Indie spot time. Got uh, it. do you want to ke- you want a Kleenex after that sneeze? Ah, oh, yes, yeah, something, anything. Yeah, here you go. Oh. Oh. Okay, so back to a little bit of updates with the Portland wrestling. They had a big, uh, big show. There's supposed to be controversy with the world title because, hey, there's always controversy with the world title. That's their gimmick at this point. And they were I mean, gonna... it can't be anything reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, and then they were also doing a Money in the Bank sort of uh, rumble sort of thing that we still don't know who actually won it. Actually, wait, no. No, we don't know who won it. It's Scotty Mack, so he gets a shot at the 
at the uh, Pacific Northwest Heavyweight title whenever he wants. Looks like they were actually going to do it. However, this week, the ring broke. Yes, the whole... Well, there was like a key uh, weld that actually broke in the ring, so they had to cancel the show. Which I... This is... That's just bad luck at this point. Yeah. And it was a severe liability because... If you've seen the, if you watch the show, they're like two and a half feet. Um, the audience is two and a half feet away from the ring. Three Yikes. feet most. I mean, there's no guardrails. Because it's wow, un- that's it's cramped and it's uncut. Wow, that's really a safety hazard. Even like in like old school, old school, or a lot of indie spots, there's there's a guardrail. Or there's something there to protect the audience. Yeah. Yeah, it's... <laughs> so, the ring's broken. So, what do wrestlers do when they don't have a ring? They do backstage assaults. Roddy Piper tells a story about Mount St. Helens exploding. And Colt Toombs gets run over by a car. But he gets hit by the car at five miles an hour. But still, he got hit by a car. Oh my god. <laughs> and they also showed clips from the first episode. Because they're 26 episodes in. And this was all supposed to be like, this is how far we've come, sort of thing. We I mean, we've come we've come farther than that. Yeah. And we're ten times more awesome than them, if I might say so myself. Stroking my own ego. Stroke, stroke. Yeah. I just have to go hit... I get hit by a car at five miles an hour. Sadly, I'm in I'm in Pennsylvania, so I can't hit you with a car. Ah. Uh, <laughs> then I can milk it for a year and have a who hit me storyline. Yeah. Uh, who hits you with the Hummer? Yeah. Uh, but I don't have a Hummer. Oh. Darn. It could. Well, it could be my Rav Four. That's the best I got. Hmm. Oh well. <laughs> So, okay. Oh, well, take it. Okay, take it like a man. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's Portland Wrestling Uncut. But, that was that. Oh, one other thing. Uh, Briscoe Brothers are no longer with ROH. Aww. And, uh, they were... They say that they're going after Greener Pastures... So, who knows where they're going to end up? Probably on TV somewhere. In actual TV. DNA? Or are they going to, like, the, uh... Or do you think they're going the uh, punk route and going on the, uh, developmental? Yeah, they may be on NXT. And NXT right now looks really good because, I mean, it actually looks like a very good, uh, promoted... Developmental you know, territory now. I mean, they got titles. They got I don't know. It looks really good. It looks better than what we're actually seeing from the main product. Yeah, yeah. Incidentally, I uh, recently found out that OVW, the old territory for WWE, is now working for TNA. Oh. <laughs> How the hell did that happen? I don't know. I thought they. I still think. I still thought that TNA was swindling money out of all their workers. Well, they're probably doing that too. But. I don't know. Oh well. So. We got that out of the way. Now we get to Raw. Because Raw's been extremely interesting these last couple weeks. Now, this Raw was fun. Except for John Cena. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah. So, we start off with the first match of the night. Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton. Daniel Bryan gets on the mic. He goes, count out, it's not good enough. And then Orton comes out. He goes, shut up and fight. So they do. And they fight. 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 fight. Until they're they're pulled apart by double count out. Yeah. It's uh, stated as a double TQ because they were too out of control. 
makes sense. <laughs> so, so and after a commercial break, we go backstage with Vicky Maddox and Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan says he wants a match again, and Vicky's like, um, okay. And okay, then, we'll give you a match. And then surprise, Vince. He comments that the and match. If you know. Go ahead. And if you notice that he has his hair back, mm-hmm. like in the old days. Yeah. This, I have a theory now. Uh oh. When Vince's hair is slicked back like that, he's evil, Mister McMahon. Uh oh. Watch when out. When he's when he doesn't have his hair slicked back like that, when he has that stupid like comb over look, he's nice, Mister McMahon. <laughs> Yeah, well, we got the evil one here. Mm-hmm. So, he goes that Daniel Bryan's too small. You gotta cut him from the match. All that stuff. He doesn't really like him. Pretty much what we all thought of Vince McMahon. Yeah, and his actual opinions on the industry. <laughs> yeah. So, do you think this is a bit of uh, ego stroking or poking fun of? I think this is more of a uh, backstage transition to the front stage sort of thing. We'll get to why in a minute. But first, we have another match. We have the Road Scholars versus Sheamus and Christian. Yay. And I could not give a crap about this match. Yeah. However, Sheamus gave a crap about this match because he really hit hard uh, cringe worthy a couple times but that's about it uh, I'm sorry but as much as I love I do like Sheamus as a wrestler he's a pretty decent wrestler and he's got some good moves but right now this fight with Damian Sandow it's just wearing thin on me yeah So and Christian is doing fine in this as well he's doing awesome mm-hmm Oh, so, bro kick, Sheamus wins. Yay. Next, we go backstage with CM Punk and Vicky. Vicky tries to get Punk's attention. And Punk fights back. He's being... He's being very... Uh, hostile to everybody. Yeah. Like, he has something on his mind. Hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah, and... Excuse me! No, that's just... No, that's later for on. Oh. Oh, okay. When... When Vicky actually finally does snap. Oh, oh yeah, that... That, too. That happens, too. Okay, third match of the night. Caitlyn versus Oksana. Where both divas get jobber entrances. (laughs) <laughs> and I could give two cares. Yeah. So, it doesn't re- remember... Okay, so, AJ comes out dressed as Caitlyn. In a weird bodysuit. Yeah. Because a- because Caitlyn is big, you know. I mean, she's... And... I'll admit, she's a very... She's a buff woman, but... She's not freaking Hulk Hogan. Right. But compared to AJ, she is. Well, compared to anybody, <laughs> AJ is bi- AJ is small. She's a freaking twig. <laughs> so, AJ pretty much insults Caitlyn any way she can. You know, going through the whole storyline again. And I, once again, going for the soap opera stuff and the very high school stuff that I commented on before. And insults Caitlyn's legs, how big they are, and includes the Adam's apple thing. So it's like... <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Uh, to make fun of. Caitlyn Spears wins anyway. So, that's it. That's it for that segment. Actually, there's a question that my sister just walked in at a point when the divas were going on, and she asked, are they wearing earrings? 
And I was wondering that myself when I was looking at their lobes. It's like, are they actually wearing earrings? Mm. I'm hoping not. That's a safety hazard right there. Oh, yeah. But my god, if they are. Mm. Okay, so next up, we have Chris Jericho versus Alberto Del Rio again. In a somewhat better match, in a fun match. Yes. I like this match. Yes, this match was fun. However, Ricardo gets involved with the bucket because he's a heel again. Because they're the bad guys. Yeah. So I do have to point out one thing in this match that I thought awesome. That freaking lion salt that Jericho did from the middle, from the end of the ring into the middle of the ring. Ooh. Yeah. Which is damn impressive he's launching himself that far. Yeah. And then again, surprise Ziggler! Surprise sneak attack Ziggler. Yeah. I think Ziggler took a few th- few levels in row, if you will. Yeah, zigzag to Alberto Del Rio. Jericho's like, okay, you didn't screw up the match this time. And he leaves. However, he gets zigzagged again. Sneak attack zigzag. Uh, if we keep this up, he's going to be Randy Ortoning the crap out of people. Yeah, watch out now. He's going to be able to sneak attack zigzag people. Mm-hmm. Next up, we go backstage with Ficky and Maddox again. This time, Triple H comes out. And he's like, you know, I heard a rumor that Daniel Bryan shouldn't be in this match, and he's too small. I don't think that. You should put the match back on. Yeah. And Ficky goes. I swear... Yeah, I ahead. swear, I, like, I'm sorry, but this is a... I gotta step out of, like, kayfabe right here. Okay. You're telling me that there's these two warring heads of the department. And they're and they're contradicting each other. Is it... There's gotta be, like, something Vicky can do. She can't just... Like, there's... Is there no HR department here? Is there no, uh, like court civil rest she can go to and ask these two guys to stop being dickheads heads and stop fucking around no because she's got two bosses that makes that makes no sense to me yeah it's, it's proving once again that apparently WWE is run by monkeys but this, or at least the corporate structure is yes but this does say something about the attitudes between uh, Vince McMahon and Triple H. Now, it does, but I don't want it in my wrestling show. No, actually, Save that shit for the backstage. Actually, well, it, it lets at least the audience know and the other smarks about how these guys think. See, Vince has gone on record that he only wants big guys in his company. You know, you got to be six foot five to ride this ride, sort of thing. Which I think, which we all know, is yeah. a very stupid mom. And it's three hundred pounds. Triple H, on the other hand, says no. If you can go, you can go. Well, Triple H is more the wrestler's CEO. Yeah. Since he's been in the business, he knows how it works, and he knows that like some people who aren't as tall, who aren't like the same size as everybody else else can still go, but they're not allowed because of this very, very strict modicum record. Yeah. Which, yeah, I agree with more Triple H H than Vince McMahon's point of view. I've always thought that way, that there's not enough small guys. They're not, there's no more, there's not a lot of Rey Mysterios out there. Mm-hmm. There's more great colleagues. Yeah. And this actually gives hope for the future. This gives me hope. Which will be crushed most likely, but hopefully when Vince does retire, yeah. or die in the ring, either or is probably at this case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, with all the other stuff that Triple H has done, and we've said on the show how much yeah. we're amazed by all this. Yeah, getting Bruno San Martino back, that's a miracle among itself. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So hopefully, 
So hopefully, yeah. Uh, hopefully, a lot of what Triple H is doing in the background is helping out a lot more than his front round appearances, which mm -hmm. I think is better for them. And especially this. And they still need to find a. They're working great on this. They still need to find a good way to write all this together. Yeah. Because the system they got going right now, it's just not gelling. Yeah, it really isn't. But they're stumbling along using what they can, which is basically what this whole Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton thing is all about. Mm -hmm. but. So, next up. We have the new WWE 2K14 cover reveal. Now, remember, this is on Twitch, so this is gaming-related, mind you. Huh. Very... how specific. Yeah, for anyone who asks. Yes, I do game on this channel, and we do discuss games. Well, we have a D&D session every time. Isn't that gaming? It yeah. don't all have to be video games. I know. Sometimes, sometimes you can have card games or board games. Yeah, I know. Sometimes motorcycles can be involved, which is always fun. Now you're talking crazy talk. I'm always a crazy man. So, okay. So, uh, there is a contest where you can design a cover for the game and winner gets to be the alternate cover, which you can flip out on the other side of the real cover. Which is interesting, but it looks like it's going to be full of clip art, so... Ha! <laughs> good luck with that. That's sad. I would have loved to see, like, a full-scale, like, art design. Yeah. I haven't seen the actual thing... yet. What, the real cover? No, no, the, uh, the contest tool. I because... would love to see... I would love to see, like, one of those, like, Marvel vs. Capcom-esque, like... Uh, scenes where you see everybody just standing and ready to brawl. Yeah. So, but onto the main cover is going to be The Rock. With the mic right up to his face. Mm -hmm. Which... And this is... Mm. And I find this odd. Why did they... Why did they take it to take two Interactive? Uh, because... Didn't like... Didn't like THQ used to work this? Yeah, THQ used to do the whole WWE games. However, they went out of business. The rights got sold, uh, actually liquidated is more like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2K and uh, Take Two, 2K is Take Two, uh, yeah, no. picked it up. And now they're running with it. Which is it just It's just odd to see that 2K logo because. I'm half, I'm half tempted to say, oh fucking sake, they Sega's now running the wrestling business. Sega's now running the uh, uh, wrestling wrestling games as well as all the sports game games. Well, at least all the good ones, besides you know whatever the hell EA is popping out. Yeah, and there was a lot of talk, you know, and worry but about then, EA taking over. With Take Two Interactive actually putting its number in, I think that's actually good for business mm -hmm. on its own sake. Yeah. So. Uh, so we have that. Release dates in October. No trailer yet. So. I'm guessing it looks like the others. Probably because it's using a lot of the same assets. Because uh, they were still in production for this version of the game when THQ went under is sad because I think THQ did amazing always made the best games when it came to wrestling I don't know going seeing all the glitches on 12 and 13 <laughs> well, that's a part of game it's a part of games itself there are supposed to be a lot of there are going to be a lot of glitches I know but having the character model stretch and fill up the entire screen yeah Never had that glitch before. Okay, so. Okay, moving on. We got Ryback. The Ryback versus Great Khali in a 
So and, uh, we don't give a shit about Kali match. Yeah, Kali the Jobber match. Mm -hmm. And he jobs. Yay! And we don't care. Yep. Next up, the John Cigna, Cigna, John Cigna, John Cigna segment. No, Cena comes out. Ugh. Oh my god, I was yelling at my screen when this happened. So, he comes out, and he pleads with the universe how he's the good guy and Henry's the bad guy. Spelling out everything. Like, we're fucking children. Well, they're Cena fans. He says, Mark Henry disgraced his family and the business and everyone who worked here. I'm going to fight for you because you got to earn this title that I throw around every single time that I get into the ring. I was going to say, I throw this this title that somehow everybody can get. It says you have to earn it. You have to earn it. Meanwhile, yeah. money in the bank is three weeks away. I look at this and I yell at the TV. Then what the fuck is money in a bank supposed to be? I don't know. You and... are an idiot! <laughs> yeah. I have more of a problem of John Cena throwing the title in the ring every single time he slides in. He doesn't wear it. AJ wears her title to the ring. Cena doesn't. I have more respect for AJ. Uh, I just don't care at this point. Curtis Axel wears his title. <laughs> I like at this, like I said, I just don't care. There's no point to that title anymore. It is a hollow thing that it once was. Next up, speaking of titles. We have a triple threat tag team match. Tons of funk with some guy from the uh, Tennessee legislator. Uh, three and I'm not, not to sound like an asshole. And I apologize to anybody who is. is, but is was that guy supposed to be? I was not paying attention to this, so you'll excuse me if I'm being an asshole. I apologize ahead of time. If I say something stupid... I'm an idiot. I apologize ahead of time. I don't want anybody to say that I'm an asshole. Well, you're going to say I'm an asshole anyway. But was that guy autistic? Um, now, I'm going to say something. Please don't flame me on the comments or on Twitter or anything like that. Uh, he's from Tennessee. <laughs> There's only one person I know who isn't and who is from Tennessee, and that's Nash. No, well, he's in Georgia now. So. Oh, oh, okay. But <laughs> he was in Tennessee. He was in Tennessee, but now he's from Georgia. Now oh, he's in oh, Georgia. Okay. That, which he's closer better. to Florida. Uh oh. Which is a death sentence right there. <laughs> but I don't mean to be an asshole about this. Yeah. He just it just something about his face just gave me a finding of. This guy must be a bit autistic. Well, okay. And I, I'm not, I'm not saying that because, I'm not saying that he's a retard or anything. No, no, no. If you're autistic, you're autistic. I'm a high functioning autistic myself. It just his, it's just his facial features just seemed. He's a politician weird. in Tennessee who got the highest winning bid on Sandy Relief Charity thing on Wrestlemania so which it just you know I apologize for sounding like an asshole there I don't but his it, his face is just contorted in this weird way it just doesn't look natural Tennessee well, well let's go with that he's not autistic he's from Tennessee yeah okay so Tons of Funk versus Three Man Band versus the Usos. And, uh, let's see. Who should we put against the Shield match? And they went with the Usos. Yeah. Who've been wanting a match with the Shield for the longest time. 
who honestly probably deserve it at this point. Yeah. All the shit they've gone through. Mm hmm. So, but hey. All the slam that everybody else has been giving it. Yeah. Usos finally get their shot. She'll come down and look at him, stare down. It's like, okay, let's go. And they leave. Intimidating, whatever. Yeah. And now we go to Paul Heyman's personal time. He comes out. This is where the soapbox drama really comes together. And, he... and then CM Punk comes out, and it's story time with CM Punk. Yay! I love story time with CM Punk. He talks about stuff, about the developmental stuff. He pretty much tells him about his first time in WWE. Yeah. How Heyman did stuff, and he was running OVW and stuff like that, and yeah. Okay, and then Heyman's like, "I did not send Lesnar after you. I don't want to compete with myself. I love you. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Sam Punk." And they'd start making out in front of everybody. Yeah. And Punk goes... Sorry. I'm sorry. Am I rewriting history in my mind again? Maybe. But he also says that I'm coming after Brock Lesnar. Now there's... Now people are wondering, did Brock Lesnar go rogue? Now actually, I think that might be a good idea. Now, hear me out on this. Uh-oh. It may sound stupid. Uh-oh. But the way you can... You can doctor it in a very unique way. You can actually make Brock Lesnar more monstrous. Yes. By pretty much saying that this guy is just a raging machine who's sick and tired of being chained down and just is released from... It says, causing all types of havoc on the wrestling world. And it's up to CM Punk to rein his ass in. Yeah. And if you do it correctly, you can make Brock Lesnar into a raving monster. Now, whether or not they do that is up to the writers. Mm -hmm. Personally, I have either one or two things that they're probably going to do. One, it's a conspiracy that Paul Heyman did it all along. And he's going to do the Harkonnen thing. You see, it was me all along. Ah, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> or they're going to go the route I just said. Mm. If you can't guess, I do like the movie Doom. I know it's a bad movie, but it's such a fun movie. Uh, up next, we have Darren Young versus CM Punk. And a Punk is mentally distracted match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Almost loses, but then wins with the end of Con of Ice. Mm -hmm. However, the other half of the primetime players, millions of dollars, millions of dollars, uh, Titus O'Neil, he comes out, he's like, oh, I'm going to beat you up now. And then they both beat him up. And then all of a sudden, Curtis Axel shows up. It's like, hey, I'm here to save you. And Punk goes, what? I don't need saving. I'm CM Punk, best in the world. Don't need yeah. saving. It's almost like people have allies in wrestling you know it's like your your top superstar your your big baby face gets beat down who's going to save him well nobody because he's going to get beat down because it's john cena yeah. and nobody cares yeah <laughs> cm punk gets beat down oh look here comes curtis oh um, whatever curtis axel because he's a paul Heyman guy as well yeah which I don't know if actually the Hennings are Paul Heyman guys. Well, at least he is. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, so after so after that we go backstage with Stephanie and Vicky. Steph is all like, "You haven't done this, or I'm gonna do it myself. I'm gonna announce the Money in the Bank ladder match." Oh. As pretty much, you see Vicky just stressing out. Yeah. Pretty much that's going to be her thing the next two days is that she's going to be stressing out in the middle of these two assholes. Well, three assholes, mind you. Stephanie, let's add her in there as well. Mm -hmm. And it's probably going to come to some sort of fight that 
She's sick and tired of this shit. She wants them all out. This is her show. Let her run it. Or something along the lines that we're sick and tired. Like, the three of them are sick and tired of fighting with each other. We're going to settle this ringside somehow. Mm -hmm. So, Steph comes out and she announces the letter match. It is going to be CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Sheamus, Randy Orton, Christian, Kane, and Rob Van Dam in this ladder match. This is a WWE title one, which includes people from SmackDown, but it kind of, you know, solidifies. At this point, it at this point it's just one solid title thing that both sides share. Oh uh, no, it's. I think there's going to be two ladder matches again. However. Uh, this pretty uh, solidifies the whole world title is actually the mid card title thing. Mm-hmm. Because people are com- have been complaining online how this uh, ladder match is so stacked with main eventers. Mm-hmm. It's because it's for the WWE title. It's supposed to be the big one. The world heavyweight title, sadly, is the mid card title at this point. Yeah. And that's, Which is a, and that's a sad thing to say that you can't have two top tiers. You got to have only one and focus it so badly. Yeah. But then again, this also goes into a complaint. I go with all this again. Let's check out the roster of who CM Punk. Right. He's won. He's won the WWE title. Yes. Daniel Bryan, has he won? He's won the World Heavyweight Title. Okay, so World Heavyweight Title. Let's say not champion, not WWE t- title winner, but title winner nevertheless. Yeah. Sheamus, same thing. World both. title winner. Uh, he's got both. Uh, Randy Orton, both as well. I'm guessing. Nine-time champion. Nine-time champion. Uh, Christian, I think he's won the world title. I don't know if he's won the WWE title as well. He's won the world title twice. So he's a world title winner as well. He's probably the most fit for what a, what a money in the bank should be. Yeah. And, uh, crap, who was the last guy? Uh, Kane? Kane and Rob Van Dam. Yeah. Kane, he's won, them all. He's won most of the titles once before, so... Yeah, and money in the bank winner himself. So he's done it before. And Rob Van Dam. Now, I'm not sure about Rob Van Dam's uh, title streaks. Uh, he's been. I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure he's been heavyweight champion. He has been WWE champion and ECW champion because he cashed in his money in the bank on John Cena and actually gave him like three weeks to think about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. And Cena still lost. And once again, we have all these guys who are champions. Mm-hmm. who've won championships in the past and they're going back into the championship arena again. Yeah. This is... I like the Money in the Bank, but not this way. I think Money in the Bank is the chance you get to get guys who are mid-carders or low-carders and you get them up to... get them up to high-card and you make sure that they get their chance their big shot at fame and try it out to see where these guys can handle the success the success that's what I think is great about money in the bank we're not getting that no we're getting the same old same old just with a new dressing of who's gonna get the title shit who's Mm. gonna get the contender shit yeah yeah and and at this point, I'm betting Daniel Bryan simply because so much is going his way favorably. Yeah, you can you can smell it at yeah, this point. I can smell it, which is odd because I have gasoline on my fingers. Oh, you shouldn't smell that. Okay. Oh, I've washed it three times. I don't know what it is. Okay, so so we got that to look forward to. Three weeks ahead, away from that, but. Next, we go backstage with the right back. He says that he wants to eat Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho's what? 
Okay. I'll beat you up. Not necessarily eating, but beat you up. Oh. Somewhat disgusting boorishness we got going on here. Yeah. So, got that to look forward to, I guess. So, next. Okay. And that should be fun. I mean, Chris Jericho is Chris Jericho. Mm hmm. And the Ryback is, well, the Ryback. Mm -hmm. Next, we go backstage again with Punk and Paul Heyman. And Punk's all like, he didn't need to do that. And then Heyman's like, yeah, I did. Next week, you're going to tag with Curtis Axel because the primetime play is. And Punk's all like, I'm so above this. this is, I mean, it's like, I don't want to do this. I don't, don't want to do this. I don't need to do this. Pretty but, much he's tweening. Yeah, I mean... I mean, we like him as a wrestler. Yeah, he's gonna fight because it's a fight, but it's against two jobbers, and, you know... Mm-hmm. And he's... Yeah. So, okay, that's next week. Uh, Mark Henry then comes out. And he's all like... Ha ha ha, I fooled you. You are all puppets and stupid. And he's right. Yeah. And it was a great move, doing the whole retirement speech and then backing out of it and slamming Cena. I love that part. He fooled us all, man. Yeah. I will give it to him. Well played, Mark. Well played. Yeah. Oh, what a heel. <laughs> Are you kidding? I've seen better acting from that from John Cena in his movies. That was better acting there than any movie John Cena's been in. I want my son back. Oh, stop. <laughs> Main event time. Yay. Uh, okay, the Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton street fight. This was hell. This was a fun match. And fun to fun. watch. Because this was... I don't want to say a good old slobber knocker like JR would say. But... This was pretty brutal of a match. Yeah. Uh, the match started out with an Orton chair shot to the head. And mm -hmm. I go, that's a fine. <laughs> There's a fine right there. <laughs> Uh, Orton goes through a table. Brian almost goes through a table. Only breaks off a little bit at the bottom. Yeah. The kendo stick. Oh, that kendo stick. They beat the shit each other out with that kendo stick. Oh, I love it. No, I love what comes up next. Where Brian grabs the kendo stick and uses it a part of the yes lock. The no lock. Or the yes lock. Yeah. Or whatever Lockie it is this week. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that looked really brutal. That awesome. actually looked like it would hurt. Awesome and brutal. That was just amazing to watch these two just beat the shit out of one another. Yeah. This was a fight. To pretty much say. Yeah. And people say that street fights can't work in like this PG era. Yes, they can. It worked. It works beautifully. You don't need blood for a street fight. Yeah. It worked so well, and it did something else. This is one of those matches where a wrestler puts himself over so much that he gets springboarded to the main event. So you're pretty much saying that they're springboarding Daniel Bryan, the main event. Yeah. Stat. This is like the submission match between Austin and Bret Hart. Ah. It's one of those. I wouldn't go to that length. Because that was something solidified in history. Right. And changed everything about the, about the sport. Right. It's, it's one of those kind of matches. It's also... It's like... When uh, John Cena faced Kurt Angle uh, for number one contendership for WrestleMania that year, 
when uh, Cena was still mid card. And Cena went through so much through like five ankle locks and managed to pull off the victory. It's like one of those. It's like you can look back at someone's career and it's like, yep, that's the moment. That's the moment that he got the big shot. Or like when Punk came on to the ring and did his amazing announcement. Yeah. The, Literally. The, the shoot promo. Pu- the shoot promo that he did. Yeah. That was the moment shit changed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I say that this match with Randy Orton was Daniel Bryan's. Now, I may be wrong, but, you know. Hopefully you're right. Because I'd love to see more Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe shave the face a little. Because <laughs> it's starting to get unruly down there. So, Orton taps. There's a handshake at the end. Great match had by all. I and like... Orton still face. Yeah, somehow. That's the only big problem I have. With this. I somehow... don't. I don't know how he gets cheers. Because you know. Eh, I mean, he can pull off a good match every once in a I, while. But. I acclimated to the Wolverine effect. That people just like him because he's a badass Mamba Jamba most of the time. And he doesn't, but he always gets his ass kicked. I guess? I don't know. Anyway. So. But that's pretty much raw. Yep. That last that last match made the night. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I want to see more of those. And now, for SmackDown, coming up, we have Alberto Del Rio's Fiesta thing, which will get interrupted by Dolph Ziggler again. Yeah, pretty much. And we will also have a, another street fight, a Dublin street fight between... Seamus and uh, Damian Sandow will hopefully put it into this stupid storyline. Mm-hmm. Is anything with Daniel Bryan go- coming up? Um, I, I I think I missed the promo, but he's going to be there. It's going to be good. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. I but- hope, yeah, I hope, like, they go back to the American Dragon. Like, yes. Mm-hmm. He's wearing the Yes shirt now, too. Which is awesome. Yeah. And, and the celebration afterwards. That, that was just awesome, too. Where everybody stands up and just shouts yes? Yeah. Yes! 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 Almost brings a tear to my eye. There is some justice in this world, after all. Justice. <laughs> okay. And I don't mean the shield. So, so that was 50 episodes in this current run. 50 episodes. Now that brings a tear to my eye. I know. It's like a project that actually lasted this long. We've actually somewhat been productive in our work. Yeah. They said that, that, they said that this show wouldn't last 10. But we showed them. Yo, Adrian, we did it. Uh, but it's been fun. It's been fun 50 episodes. Hopefully, you to an- here's to another 50 more. Yep, another 50. Uh, well, it's and awesome. we'll... It's been awesome bitching with you guys. But I've toned down a little bit, as you can tell. The pe- the, mu- the medicine is starting to work a little bit better. <laughs> they upped my doses, if you can't tell. Yeah. Oh, oh. and we will catch you next week. Once again, for the Sunset Flip Wrestling Podcast. 50 episodes, respect! Da-da, da-da-da.